In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the historian event system to correlate process data, temperatures, pressures, flows that are being collected by the Wonderware historian and correlate that back to a specific batch number or production ID or a test ID. So then when I want to extract that information, I can extract that information by that ID and not just looking at the time that the actual data was collected. So in this example scenario, we're going to capture some data, some temperature, some pressure, some flows. We're going to log that to the Wonderware historian, but we're going to log that information against a specific test ID and against a specific serial number for the piece of equipment I'm testing here. So the whole concept is I want to be able to extract this information from the Wonderware historian based on this serial number and the test ID of the piece of equipment I'm testing. So we're going to use the Wonderware historian event system to detect the start of a test, it's going to log that start time, log the ID, log the serial number to a separate table in the database. And then when I need to go extract that information, I can use that table to extract the historical information, the flows, temperatures, pressures, based on that ID. So let me start a test and show you how this is done. So first thing I need to do is enter a serial number of the test or the actual piece of equipment here. So uh, one, two, three, four, and I'm gonna give it a start command. You can see that the light's flashing, so I'm simulating starting a test. So it's, it's capturing this information. It's capturing the information I see on this trend here to the Wonderware historian. But also it logged that information as far as the test ID and the location. I'm on test stand number one. It logged all that to this additional table that we have in the historian database to be able to correlate that data when we do the extraction. So we're ready to stop the test. We're going to hit a stop. That's going to execute a command to put the stop time into that database. So now I'm in SQL Server Management Studio. We're going to just do a quick select statement to look at that data that was inserted into this table about the actual test that was run. So if I execute this query, it's basically selecting all information from this table called Tele test that we used here. So I do an execute, and you can see it has a test ID that was stored in the table. The serial number, that's the serial number we typed in on the in-touch screen, keeps track of the test station. It knows the start time and the end time of the test. So then we can go do an extraction. We can pull the information from the Wonderware historian based on this start and end time. So let's take a look inside the configuration of the Wonderware historian. We're using something called an event tag inside the historian to log that information to the table we just looked at. So an event tag has the ability to detect an action, a detector here. It's detecting this start of test bit, and then it's going to do something. It's going to take an action. In this case, the action is going to execute a SQL command. So the SQL command is basically doing a select getting that ID from the live table that we have in the system. It's getting the live tag name where the Titan ID is. And then it's going to execute this stored procedure. It's going to execute a stored procedure that's going to add that information into that table we previously looked at. So I'm back in SQL Server Management Studio, and this is the stored procedure that's being called by the Wonderware event system. You know, we're passing in that Titan serial number, and we're passing in the test station ID, and basically, this is the insert into that table we looked at. So it's passing that information, it's getting the start time, which is the current time, and inserting that into that SQL table that we previously looked at. So we're also using an event tag to execute the stop command to be able to log that information. So the detector in this case is going to be the end test bit. It could be a bit coming up from your PLC that's being logged by the Wonderware historian. And the action in this case is also going to take that ID, but it's also going to update the test, and basically it's going to fill the end time of the test in there. So there's another store procedure that we're calling that says update test, and that's going to basically put the end time of the test on there. So here's the store procedure that's used to update the test, to basically fill in the end time of the test. So we're passing in a couple parameters, the serial number and the test station. It's going to look up that serial number, and that serial number is going to be used to update that end time of that specific test. So now that we've seen behind the scenes of what it takes to log that information to the database, we'll do that one more time. On um, test station number two, I'm going to put in a serial number. 
I'm going to put in 5678 is my serial number of this test. I'm going to start the test. You can see the test is running. We're logging information to the SQL Server database at this point. We're going to stop the test, which is basically going to close out that test. It's going to put the end date into the database. Now we're going to re-query the database to make sure the new test that we just executed is in there. So I'm going to execute on this procedure here. So now you see we have this test 5678. It's on test station number two. It has a valid start time and a valid end time for the test that we just completed. So now we have this information logged to the historian and to this test table. Let's talk about how do we extract that information. You know, one way to do that is to go to the Wonderware historian client. You know, we know the start time, we know the end time, we know the station number, so we can go find those tags. Here's station one, flow, pressure, and temperature, and we could dial in that start time and end time, and we could see that data. That's one way of doing it, kind of tedious. So the whole concept of this other table that we have here is we store this information in a table. We can write a query to use this information. We could use the test stand information and the start and end time to go extract that information directly from the Wonderware historian. So let's go talk about how we do that. So now we're going to take a look at how we query that data from the Wonderware historian using this information that we've stored in this table. You know, we kept track of this test ID, the serial number, the test station, the start and end time. So we want to use this information to correlate that data and extract the information from the Wonderware historian. So we have a stored procedure here that we're going to execute that's going to do that. I'm going to pass in this test ID into that stored procedure. And we'll take a look at that stored procedure in a minute. But I'm going to paste that in there. I'm going to execute that. And there's the data. There's the result set that got returned. We're pulling that information from the Wonderware historian. All the information that's being logged about this test, we can see here. It's correlated to this time that the actual test was taking place. You can see here's the flow, here's the pressure, and here's the temperature. So let's take a look at that stored procedure and see how that was done. So here is that stored procedure that we used to extract the information. We're passing into the stored procedure the test ID. We're declaring some variables are used internally. You know, from that test ID, we're going to extract that start and end time and the test station number from the, the test table that we've previously been talking about. We're going to use that information to define the tags that we're going to pull that information from because each test station is going to log its process data to a different historian tag. So whether it's from station one, two, or three, it's going to log data to a different tag set in the Wonderware database. So we're going to parse this out and come up with a variable that's going to contain those tags. We're going to do a conversion to get the correct uh, date time format. But then here's the actual query that we're going to execute. We're going to go extract this information. We're passing in those tags from the Wonderware historian. We're using something called the wide history table. We're passing in that start and end time. I'm going to extract that information. We're going to build that into a string, and then we're using this from an open query function within uh, SQL, and we're executing that query. So it's basically this query right here. We're passing in parameters into this query, extracting information from that test table so we can correlate the actual process data, the flows, the temperatures, pressures, from the actual test event that happened. Well, thank you for watching today. Please check out another video on the site that talks about how to use this same functionality that we're looking at here inside an SRS report. Thank you. Need to learn more about this and other in-source products? Check out our training tracks designed to guide you down your learning path for in-source products. Whether you're using a classic InTouch and Historian architecture or using System Platform, we have a track to help you get the most out of your software investment. To register or learn more, click the link in the video description below. Thanks for watching this in-source video.